In a dark room inside a North Georgia library, newspaper headlines take us back to a murder that shocked a small community 42 years ago. You can't imagine that kind of evil. A 75-year-old woman, Grace Perry, raped and killed with a yard rake inside her Rome, Georgia home, the room where she's found covered in blood. All over the bed, all over the floor, against the walls. This was a butchering. Yes. Another woman inside, Edith Polston, was assaulted, managed to escape. She never saw the man's face. Judy Carnes is her daughter. And had Mama not escaped, I can't imagine what her death would have been like. Police immediately made an arrest. 19-year-old James Rogers. He was no stranger to the women. Rogers lived next door. Why was he climbing over the fence into some other neighbor's yard at 12, 15 at night? He lived right there next door. During the investigation, detectives notice an injury on Roger's forearm. They believe looked like a bite mark. At trial, renowned forensic dentist Dr. Richard Suveron testified with full certainty that the murder victim's teeth matched the bite mark on Roger's. Prosecutors reminded the jury that Dr. Suveron had just helped convict serial killer Ted Bundy, the first nationally televised criminal trial in the U.S. It didn't take long for the jury to find Rogers guilty, sentencing him to death in 1985. There's no doubt in my mind that Grace beat him. Nearly four decades later, Rogers is still alive. Seen here inside a Floyd County courtroom this past August, requesting a new trial after his lawyers believe they found new evidence that could set Rogers free. Defense exhibit U and V be introduced as evidence. Chris Fabricant with the Innocence Project is one of Rogers' attorneys. You cannot execute somebody when we know that the evidence that was used at trial has been entirely discredited. The evidence at issue? That bite mark found on Rogers. The same forensic dentist who said the victim bit Rogers now believes he got it wrong. Writing in this 2020 affidavit that I no longer believe as I testified at Mr. Rogers' trial that Grace Perry's teeth to the exclusion of all others, inflicted the injury on Mr. Rogers' forearm. Fabricant believes the jury convicted Rogers based on Dr. Suveron's original testimony. Who's been made world famous by the Ted Bundy trial, a known superstar in a forensic field. You're never going to question an expert like that. This past October, the federal government weighed in on the issue for the first time. After a multi-year study, the National Institute of Standards and Technology issued this scathing report, writing that bite mark analysis lacks a sufficient scientific foundation, explaining that human skin is not a reliable surface to analyze because it changes over time, depending on swelling, healing, and skin elasticity. Since 2005, more than 30 people incarcerated for bite mark evidence have been exonerated or had their indictments dismissed, including Sheila Ditton, sentenced to life in prison for a 2004 murder in Waycross, Georgia. Sheila, you sit right there just a second. Two years ago, a Ware County judge ruled the bite mark evidence used to convict Ditton was unreliable, saying it should never serve as a basis of a conviction. She spent nearly two decades in prison for a crime she did not commit. Do you hold any resentment or, or anger about what happened to you? Yes, I'm just mad, mad, because I missed almost six, 17 years of my life locked up. For decades, the American Board of Forensic Odontology, the organization that accredits forensic dentists, pushed back against skeptics who disagreed with its science. Then you create distortions. Until Dr. Adam Freeman became its president in 2015. Right after he took over the board, Freeman asked his fellow forensic dentists to compare dozens of bite marks with dental impressions. The results, these highly trained experts were unable to agree on whether they matched, and some couldn't even confirm the samples were bite marks at all. Our jaws fell, were falling open. We were just, you know, the blood drained out of my face. He resigned from the organization shortly after, concerned with the reliability 
of this science. Listen, I got caught up in this. I drank that Kool-Aid. I, I wanted to become board certified. That was like, the pinnacle was gonna be the pinnacle of my career. And at the end of the day, it's smoke and mirrors. In your opinion, is your former organization responsible for putting innocent people behind bars? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. It's just about telling the truth that there's innocent people in jail uh, convicted based on this junk science. And bite marks are junk science. They are the epitome of junk science. A new book published this year called Junk Science Highlights the Problem. It's written by Chris Fabrican, Roger's attorney. It chronicles a list of flawed forensics used to put people in prison for decades. Fabricant believes Rogers is among those wrongfully imprisoned. And what he really needs is a fair trial, one where there's no cheating with junk science and a fair adjudication of the facts of the case. The district attorney's office says Rogers got a fair shake the first time. Your Honor, there was ample evidence presented at this trial without the bite mark evidence that would have convicted Mr. Rogers. Judy Carnes agrees. She points to Rogers' alleged confession and his fingerprint prosecutors claim was found on the murder weapon, where she sits the evolving science isn't enough to convince her the jury got it wrong. Everything improves over time the way you do things. That's what they had to work with way back then. But does everyone get a new trial because of it? They know they're guilty. They do not want anyone left on death row, and they will keep doing these cases until death row is emptied. A man a jury once thought deserved to die for a heinous crime, still alive and making headlines four decades later.